Hello and welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. During the holiday season, you might be looking for some creative ways to decorate around the homestead. Or even if you're stumbling across this video some other time during the year, this one is too awesome not to try. What we're going to do today is make some snowflake ornaments by manipulating a solution's solubility. And the solution that we're going to use involves the easy to find, very affordable home chemical sodium borate, aka borax. Before we go any further, let's get something straight. Borax is something that you do not want to eat. I'm not really worried about you, but if you've got any pets that like to pick up and chew anything, then maybe it's a good idea to keep our final product out of their reach. Whenever we're doing any type of at-home chemistry, we want to always be very safe and responsible with the chemicals that we're using. Make sure that you read all the warning labels on any home chemical that you use, including our borax. Now with that being said, for the materials for this lab, of course, we're going to need some borax. Borax is one of those chemicals where there's many different uses for it. You usually find it in the stores somewhere near the detergent because it's most often used as a detergent booster. You're going to need some of these fuzzy sticks, uh, traditionally known as pipe cleaners, but there's so many other uses. You usually find these in the craft section somewhere. I'm going to use white, but you could use other colors if you wanted to. You're going to need some type of jar, and the larger, the better. The larger jar that you use, the larger your snowflake can be. I like to use the plastic ones. I've got a peanut butter jar here that I've cleaned out. And there is a reason why I use plastic instead of glass. It's a little bit better for this. You'll see what I mean. You're going to need something to measure with. Uh, I'm going to use cups, but I'll also tell you what I'm using in milliliters too. That's for those who prefer the better system of metric. You're going to need some type of thread or string. You're going to need something to hang your snowflake from while we're making it. So a pencil is probably the easiest thing that you can find around the house, but anything you can hang it from will do. You're going to need some scissors, but keep in mind that is for cutting the string only. You don't want to cut through those fuzzy bendable sticks because they have a metal center to them. For that, I really recommend some wire cutters. If you cut them with the scissors, you could ruin those scissors. Don't do that. You'll need some water. And then also, some people like to do this using a stove, but I think that complicates things. Why use a stove? If you've got a microwave, you can do this just fine. And then some optional materials, just to make it a little bit more fun. You could use some food coloring, and if you want to try this one out, I've had a lot of fun with this. Get some glow-in-the-dark paint and, of course, a paintbrush, and you can have some glowing snowflakes when we're finished. It makes it just that much more festive. So what's the plan here? How's this going to work? Well, in order to talk about it, i got to make sure you speak my language. We're going to be making some solutions. Solutions always have two parts. There's the solvent, and there's the solute. The solute is what gets dissolved in the solvent. The solvent's always what you have more of. In this case, borax is going to be our solute, and the water is going to be our solvent. We're going to make a borax solution. Solubility is the amount of substance that can be dissolved in a solution at given conditions. What that means is that for every chemical out there, there's a limit to how much you can actually get to dissolve in a certain amount. If we're talking about water here, there's only going to be so much borax that I can dissolve into an amount of water at given present conditions. We're usually talking about the temperature that it's at. If you get the maximum amount of solute dissolved into your solution that you can, then that means you've made a saturated solution. A saturated solution is a solution that has dissolved the maximum amount. It's a solution that has reached its solubility for that chemical. You can't dissolve any more in there. If you try to dissolve more into a saturated solution, it's not going to dissolve and you wind up with these pieces down at the bottom. Now when we say that you can only dissolve so much at present conditions, we're usually talking about temperature. If you change the temperature, you can change the solubility. The majority of solid chemicals out there that can dissolve in water, their solubility tends to increase if we increase the temperature. You can dissolve way more in hot water than in just room temperature water. And that includes borax. Let's take a closer look at why. Borax is the ionic compound sodium borate, whose pieces are made out of sodium, boron, and oxygen atoms. And at the atomic level, there's some complexity to its structure. For simplicity's sake, we're going to represent those ions and all those pieces as these little red candies. And the blue candies represent the water molecules surrounding it. Now when something's dissolved in water, that means enough water molecules have surrounded it to where it's balancing its charges. So as the sodium borate sits in the water, it's going to eventually dissolve enough to where it reaches its solubility for that temperature. If we take our solution and heat it up, then there's going to be extra spaces in between our particles. With those extra spaces, we'll be able to dissolve more of the borax. It'll have a higher solubility. If we place something in there, like our fuzzy sticks, then as the solution cools, the solubility of the borax is going to decrease. 
we'll get some crystals on our fuzzy sticks. You got all that? All right, hypothesis time. If we make a saturated borax solution at higher than normal temperatures, and then we put something in it, something like our fuzzy snowflake, as the solution cools down, the solubility of the borax will decrease. And that means our borax that's dissolved is going to have to come out of solution. It's going to recrystallize onto our snowflake that's in there. So are you ready? Let's prepare to precipitate. Start out with three pipe cleaners and then take your jar and measure the diameter of the jar and trim your pipe cleaner so that way it's going to be able to fit through there. You can leave a little bit extra because after we twist them they're going to be a little bit shorter. Use that pipe cleaner to measure how much you need to cut off of your others so you got three lengths that are equal in size. Now take them and twist them in the middle and there's a reason why we're using three. So that way when we twist it we can then start to spread out the ends and we'll have six ends. Snowflakes in nature also have six-sided symmetry. There's a reason for that. It has to do with the shape of the water molecule. You can get creative if you want to, and you can twist other pipe cleaners around like I'm doing, or see what other shapes you can come up with. Once you've got your snowflake, then you're going to take it and tie a string to somewhere on there so that way you can hang in the borax solution that you make. Next, you want to fill enough water into your jar so that way your snowflake that you made can be fully submerged in it. For me, that took three and a half cups, or 830 milliliters. Measure as you go. Then we're going to heat it up. And you don't have to use a stove for this. Put it in the microwave, and I'm going to start with two minutes for my volume of water. You don't need to get it boiling. In fact, you don't want it to. It should be warm, but not boiling when you take it out. Next, add your borax. I'm using one cup in my three and a half cups of water. So that's about a quarter cup of borax by volume for one cup of water. Pour it in and stir as you go. And you're going to need to do a lot of stirring. Now as you stir, you might also notice, if you feel it, that it's cooling down. That's because as it dissolves, the borax takes in some of that energy. So you might need to heat it up again. Heat it up and stir, and keep doing this until you don't see any solid particles at the bottom. Even if it's still cloudy, you've dissolved all of the solid borax. Next, take that pencil, and you're going to wrap the string around the pencil so that the snowflake hangs with enough length so that it's fully submerged, but it's not touching the bottom of the jar. Then either tie it in a knot at the pencil or tape it down. And then we're going to hang it and let it sit. That solution has to cool so that way its solubility of the borax lowers. I'm going to start my watch and we'll see how it changes over time. Just a little bit over an hour and we're already seeing crystals form. After 2 hours and 40 minutes, we've got a lot more crystals. I let mine sit for a full 5 hours and once I did, I could barely see the snowflake in there. And one advantage to using the plastic, I'm able to kind of push on it and get the snowflake loose. Now those are some beautiful atoms, if I do say so myself. Another advantage to having a plastic jar, once your snowflake crystals have grown, it's going to be a little bit wider than it was before. With a plastic jar, I can squeeze on it and widen the mouth a little bit to help get my snowflake out without harming it. Once it comes out, it's going to be dripping, so have some paper towel ready and blot it dry. Once it's fully dry, you've got yourself a beautiful snowflake ornament. So you've got a stunning, scientifically impressive decoration. Why stop there? Let's have some more fun with it. First of all, that borax solution that you just used, there's still plenty of borax in there, and it's reusable. Just microwave it and stir and microwave and stir. Heat it up and get it to all dissolve again. Go through that a few times, and eventually you'll get it all to dissolve, and it's reset and ready to go. You might need to add a little bit more borax again because you did take some out when you removed your first snowflake. Try some other interesting snowflake shapes. Get creative. See what kind of interesting designs you can do. But if you want to keep them scientifically accurate, make sure they always have six-sided symmetry. How about some color? Add some food coloring into the batch, and you can get a snowflake that has a little bit of a tint to it. you got to add a lot of food coloring to get a little bit of color, though. So you're going to go through a bit of this. But I think another great option that's really fun, take that glow-in-the-dark paint, and after you've made your snowflake, before you put it into the solution, paint it with the glow-in-the-dark paint. You're going to have to be kind of generous with that paint. The more you have, the more impressive of an effect you'll get. If you go to do this, I'd make sure to paint just one side, let it fully dry, and then paint the other side. And again, make sure it's fully dry before you put it in the solution. Make your snowflake just like we did before, and when you take it out, it will be able to glow in the dark. How cool is that? Hey, I really hope you enjoyed doing this lab. You know, when I think about the greatest gifts I've ever received, they're not really things as much as it's been knowledge. When people in my past have taught me things, taught me valuable lessons, 
allowed me to understand something. Those are the gifts I truly cherish. So this holiday season, please keep in mind, it's not about how much money you spend on each other, it's about how much time you spend with each other, doing memorable things together. That's the true gift that shows that you care. Thanks for checking out this episode of Indie Labs. I hope you have an excellent holiday season, and I'll see you next year. Wu-Tang!